Welcome back, folks. Welcome back to our journey across the entire planet, stopping at many locations along the way. If you remember last time, we stopped in a small airstrip buried in one of the national parks here in Africa, right along the coast of one of the major Great Lakes here in Africa, and it is a beautiful sunrise morning. I am always following real weather, although I do adjust the time to give me a bit of a variety for how I fly. We might have some night flights, but today we're waking up in the morning and getting in the air. To give you a little idea of where we are and where we're going, this is the uh, national park that we are currently in. And here is that airstrip that we're sitting on right now. We're sitting on the uh, eastern side here looking for a westerly departure. And if you remember, one of the next major things that we are looking to visit is Victoria Falls, a little bit further south. Well, a little bit as in, I don't know, two, 3,000 kilometers. However, there is a nice spot kind of along the way, maybe about halfway, in this rather populated, about a half a million people it seems here, in the city of, I'm going to probably pronounce many things along this journey, but Kowese, Kowese. and there's a small airport um, in this city as well too. However, between here and there, I found it rather interesting as I was researching some things in the area, that there's this region, this is called there's a couple names for it, but one of them is this Upemba Depression. Also, there's a national park uh, with its namesake here, as you can see, to the uh, southeast. This is buried deep in the Congo, very rural, very hard to get to, hours away from major cities and, and help. So we'll fly carefully. Um, they believe that uh, years ago, this may have been another major large lake, uh, but with the water level changes, it's very marshy here. However, that's led to a great biodiversity um, habitat here for many mammals and birds, and looking forward to getting a closer look here. So along our journey, I plotted in on the autopilot a couple waypoints, one at the uh, start of this depression and the end, and then a final one to help us get a nice approach to the airport. So that's what we're doing today. We're just taking off, doing a nice flyover of this uh, really cool ge geological feature, and going ahead and landing as we continue to make our way towards Victoria Falls. So let's go ahead and get back in the airplane. And sun is rising a bit now. Should be a beautiful morning to fly. Let's get in the cockpit and get this thing started. Fuel selectors on. Let's get our fuel flow going there. Battery. Pump is on. Ignition. And let's get the starter. And avionics. So as the engine continues to fire up, you can see that I put a custom flight plan in with a few of the different waypoints. It looks like we got about 25 nautical miles to enter the beginning of that depression, or at least my waypoint, rather. Um, and then another... 25 plus uh, nautical miles to okay. to make our way across that. All right, so we are fired up. Let me go ahead and flip off the starter. And I am going to go ahead and uh, wheel us around to the eastern edge of this airstrip. And we'll get up in the air. Okay. So we are now nearing ready for departure. Let's go ahead and get a few things set in. Let's get our heading bug 
take us straight out before we click on our GPS navigation. I don't want to fly too high today. As you can see, we're just under 4,000 feet, and it's not much different at our destination. I do want to have a lower flyover once we get to the depression, but let's maybe get to about 8,000, or, you know, let's do 7,500. I enjoy the, uh, the, views along, the views along the way. Let's get us up to maybe 800 feet per minute. That should be nice and smooth, not too much. Fuel mix is full and rich. Prop RPM is full. Let's go ahead and uh, make sure that, yes, we are on GPS navigation. And you can see our purple line is going to be taking us southwest to begin. However, we're going to be uh, heading straight out briefly until we get airborne a little bit. So I am going to go ahead and actually fully extend flaps just because it's not the longest of runways. And I like to get up in the air to minimize any issues as soon as possible. So we are ready to roll, folks. So I'm going to full throttle this. Keep an eye on that RPM gauge. Because right after we get in the air, it's probably going to be redlining a bit. And we'll have to kick it down a few notches. go and we are off beautiful we'll raise flaps partially as we continue to gain altitude and we are about 500 feet off the ground I will fully raise the flaps Cessna Juliet November 316 is type Cessna Caravan, two miles northwest of Hotel Tango Mike Lima, 4,100 feet. Request flight following. Cessna Juliet November 316 Star Center. Squawk 7752. Squawk 7752 Cessna 316. Cessna 316 radar contact, three miles northwest of Hotel Tango Mike Lima, 4,000. Altimeter 2 Niner Decimal Niner 5. Roger Cessna, Tree 1 6. All right. 2 Niner Niner 5 was that barometer? Barometric pressure? Confirm that's what he said. Come on, you can do it. Yeah, two nine or nine or five, so let's go ahead and don't need that up. Oh. Alright, airspeed's good. Got a reasonable incline. Let's go ahead and flip over to nav so we can get our course corrected and on track. And as you can see, I'll show you in a minute when we level out. Big lake. If you remember from one of our last episodes, this uh, great lake that we're flying over is about 400 miles from north to south. This is a massive lake. So it's saying that we got about um, 186 nautical miles.
Oh yeah, sorry, I think I was uh, <laughs> reading our <laughs> our destinations a little off, folks, sorry. I thought that sounded a bit short when I was looking at the flight plan. Um, so either way, we got a bit of a, a bit of a journey. We're going to get up to our cruising altitude. And then as we get closer to our first pass through the depression, we'll go ahead and come back and take a look. All right. Stay tuned. All right, so we are back and at cruising altitude, at least for where I want to hang out right now at about 7,500 feet. Um, we are tracking uh, with the GPS pretty well right now. And I dropped my prop RPM and throttle and fuel mixture uh, for proper altitude as well as uh, proper fuel consumption. Uh, as I don't want to burn too much. So we are currently burning right now about 367 pounds per hour, which will get us, as you can see, with the full tanks at about 2,200 pounds. Should get us uh, quite a bit. Um, and I'm not sure uh, some of you watching might no, I'm going to have to fully understand, but it's interesting when I call up the flight plan, which was confusing me, is I see these custom waypoints at, you know, 25 nautical miles, 51 nautical miles, 182, and so on. I was kind of caught off guard when I started seeing that my GPS is tracking me. Oops, sorry. As you can see, to... Um, my first uh, custom waypoint at about 167 nautical miles, which coincides with the game nav log. Um, as you can see, it's about 192 nautical miles to our first uh, waypoint. So, not sure ex exactly the uh, disparity between the flight plan and this. I'm sure there's a reason, and it's my misunderstanding. However, um, so we do got a bit of a hike, as I fully expected, because we have about a four or 500 nautical mile uh, journey today, and it's going to be about a good 166 nautical miles, or according to the GPS, a little over an hour until we actually get to uh, the beginning of this uh, depression that we're going to be flying through. So, just wanted to tune you back in, clarify a few things, and continue on our journey. So we should be set here in position for a while while the autopilot helps guide us there while we pay attention to our instrumentation and our passengers. Maybe we can hand out some snacks. All right. See you shortly. So while we are still a little bit away, I just thought I would you inside the cockpit for a little bit as we have been flying over this dense dense jungle for uh, for a little bit now this is quite remote As you can see, we have a little bit of um, lower mountains back in the distance over there, but I think we're okay for a while here. I'm flying a little, as you can see by the RAM, about 2,000 feet off the surface here. For a little while I saw some roads and occasional houses, but it's been uh, pretty remote for quite a while. And we still have about 
80 nautical miles until we even reach that stretch of marshland there so you can only imagine um, what it must be like actually trying to get here so not too many areas for an emergency landing if we need it but there are occasional strips that we might be able to find but but not much that's for sure all right just wanted you to uh come inside and uh take a peek with us so we continue to head through this low altitude depression wetlands this quite remote area of Africa again this is uh what I understand this is deep in the heart of the Congo and I'm just manually flying as I was kind of flying through here I saw a marker for an airport and thought it might be fun to do a little bit of a flyover as you can see from my um, altitude here um, actually I gained a little bit of altitude uh, I was at about 3,500 feet um, but we lost about six, seven, a hundred feet in elevation as we were entering this uh, depression. So certainly lower altitudes, which of course makes sense. We just entered this area, lots of wetlands. This is one of the first lakes that we're flying through. And again, just for fun, I, I saw this uh, airport on the heads up display came up and I thought we can go ahead and maybe maybe take a look so let's drop some elevation as you can see we're about 2300 feet off the ground right now after I take a look maybe I'll go ahead and put this back on autopilot and get us on course Sometimes some of these remote airports are so hard to see. Anyways, as we make our way over there, as you can see, it's uh, quite remote. As I mentioned earlier, I think they said this is thought to have once been maybe another one of the larger lakes before some of the water level changes. Looks like we might even have some semblance of human interaction here with maybe some agriculture. I did read that um, this has been populated for a while. Obviously not much, but people have been living in this area, although remote. And it looks like we got a small dirt airstrip here. Bukama Airport. Maybe I'll look up some of these cities. Uh, you know, I one of the ways that I fly that's maybe not realistic is some of these POIs and city markers that I display. But I just, again, I, I'm flying also to learn and have fun and adventure and use my imagination. So it's also interesting to, to see some of the markers. And maybe I'll Google something later. So yeah, let's uh, let's jump out of the airplane for a second. As we can see, not exactly a uh, densely populated airport, but there is a little city over here. That's interesting. I'll have to look that up. Lemba Nikulu. I'll have to remember that. Do a little research on this uh, town. There's quite a bit here. All right, well, I'm going to throw it back into autopilot. Get us back on course. Hey, Tuba. Interesting. 
So yeah, uh, we'll uh, get back on course here. And uh, watch that airspeed. I think we'll be okay now once we leveled off. It's getting us back to about 3,500 feet to keep us about 1,500 plus feet off the ground just so we can get a good visual. So anyways, I know a little bit of a longer stretch in this video, but I just thought I'd have you come take a look with me as we see things that we would definitely normally not see. Another little small town. But again, the uh, GPS is guiding us back into this wetland depression, so not much is likely going to be here. So I'm going to continue flying through this. Um, it's going to take us about, again, it's about 80 nautical miles, so about another half hour uh, to get through this area. And if I see anything else of note, we'll tune back in. Otherwise, um, otherwise, yeah, this is pretty cool. Definitely, uh, definitely a unique environment, especially the size, right? I mean, just this is massive. I was reading that this is just a huge gathering of biodiversity with mammals and birds. And again, as a birder, although there's probably lots of mosquitoes down there. But anyways, as a birder, um, I'm sure I'd uh, find some fascinating things to take pictures of here. All right, well, let's get back in the seat, and uh, thanks for coming with us. We'll uh, tune in a little bit later and probably be prepared to land next time we uh, touch base unless I see something. All right, so we are back, although we're not through the actual uh, depression. I just wanted to have you come and take a peek again, as this is most definitely uh, a little different than I would have thought. I, I guess I didn't really know what to expect, but it is um, very, just huge expanse of wetlands and marshlands. I can imagine why this is uh, such a great habitat for such a diverse set of wildlife. Really cool and beautiful. Uh, all the different parts of the earth here. And, and as you can see along the shoreline, um, you occasionally have these little cities. Sorry, kids, just trying to squeak past you to get a good look. Um, but yet in the middle here, the stretch that we're flying through is what we chose to fly through. Um, it's very much... very much all expanse of marshlands. Would love to take one of those airboats or fan boats <laughs> and maybe drive through some of this stuff too. Alright, well, I just thought I'd uh, show you around. We shall continue. Alright, welcome back. We are making our descent for approach. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and hold this altitude. Probably a little low, but um, we're about 900 feet right now above the ground. We are in Laps range, so I'm going to drop the first level of flaps here. We want to get our speed down to about uh, 80, 80 to 85 knots. Prop and fuel mix at full. are 
about, let's see, just about three and a half nautical miles outside our landing strip. Turn off autopilot. And we'll go, go ahead and guide this in. And drop our oops, lamps fully extended. Watch our speed. Be you, buddy. Cessna three one six, did you copy? Uh, I did. Come on, co-pilot. Outside of my uh, co-pilot uh, needing to uh, wake up here. We have arrived. All right. We'll follow our taxi instructions. Rest up for our next uh, adventure. Look for some things to do in the area. Hey, thanks for waking up, buddy. That's kind of you to just drive right in front of where you're taxing. Alright, I'm going to park here. Share. Park on the grass. Alright, All right. so let's go ahead and engine shutting down, shut our fuel tanks off, avionics, and master battery. Alright folks, well, we have arrived. And, uh, and yeah, so we'll uh, plan our next trip. I'll explain about a little bit where we're going. I have some exciting adventures for Victoria Falls. I will just say that we're going to attempt a low-level follow the river between the, uh, <laughs> between the um, edge of the falls along the along the river shore there. Sorry, I'm not speaking clearly. Whatever. It's going to be exciting. That That's all that matters. Um, hopefully not too exciting that it's actually frightening. 
But, um, all right, I hear some engines going on. What's going on over there? Is that you? No, it's not you. Hmm. All right. Well, thanks for joining for another flight as we continue our tour around the world. Currently right now in Africa, several spots left to go. Um, but don't forget to uh, continue to follow us along. Give us a like or subscribe if you want to uh, <laughs> join us on our flying adventures as I fly around the world and still learn how to fly a plane too. So that always, that, that, that's always exciting too. All right, folks. Thanks, and uh, look forward to our next flight together. Take care and God bless.